Okay, guys. <laughs> Yesterday, in Lesson 1-6, we talked about our translations. We did the vertical translations, the horizontal translations. We talked about our reflections, about the x-axis reflection, y-axis reflection, and the origin reflection. So, on the back side, we're going to start in today by talking about stretches and shrinks. Okay, so if you remember on the front side yesterday, there were two different sections under stretches and shrinks, right? One of them, that bottom one, which was at what? C times F of X. That's what you've done in algebra two. That's your vertical stretch and shrink. The one above it is F of X divided by C. That's more of the horizontal. We'll talk about how to figure that one out. So, as you look at A here, y equals 2x squared. And, okay, it says state the horizontal. I'm actually going to, that should really say, state the horizontal or vertical stretch or shrink. So, as we look at A, what comes to mind on A, guys? Okay. Specify what type of stretch for me, please, and I'll go with it. Horizontal. I heard both here. I heard vertical, I heard horizontal. <laughs> okay. Remember the notes say? If it's a number multiplying out front, so this is 2 times that function x squared, so that is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And that's all I'm going to talk about on this one. Okay. When the number is just multiplied out front, vertical stretch all the way through, we're not going to do anything fancy with it. Okay. It's multi and it's multiplied by the whole function. Okay, B. Y equals, and it's 4 tenths X raised to the second power. Thoughts on what we do on this one? It's quiet. If it's vertical, it matches this form, right? Where you're multiplying a number times the whole function. Am I multiplying the number but times the whole function? Not in the form it's in right now, right? Okay. If it's a horizontal stretch, it's x divided by a number. Well, I see x. Is it x divided by a number? Not really in the current form. It's more x times a number. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of adjust this. Okay, um, work with me here. If I say 0 0.4, what is 0 0.4? Okay, said properly, it is 4 tenths, which makes it the fraction 4 tenths, right? 4 tenths, if we want to reduce, reduces to 2 fifths. Agreeable there? So I'm going to change this for the moment to say that, okay, instead of saying this is 0.4x quantity squared, are you guys okay if I say that this is 2 fifths x quantity squared? Still equivalent? Okay, all I've done is change from decimal notation to fraction notation. No big deal. Okay, so multiplying something by the fraction 2 fifths is the same as dividing by what? What? Five halves. 
because multiplying by a fraction is the same as dividing by the reciprocal. And normally what we do is we start with dividing, right? And we change division to multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm just going the other way. So my point is here is that I can rewrite this to say that this is x divided by, instead of 2 fifths, it's x divided by 5 halves quantity squared. It looks a little weird. We don't normally express fractions within fractions. But what I'm trying to figure out is, you guys start talking horizontal. Okay, is it a stretch or is it a shrink? And by what factor? If you say it's horizontal anything by 0 0.4 or by 2 fifths, I have to disagree. Because is this a 2 fifths in this problem now, the way I've rewritten it? No, this is a 5 halves. So, is this a horizontal stretch or shrink? Stretch because five halves is a number larger than one, correct? So this is going to be a horizontal stretch. And officially, I should say by a factor of five halves. Now, if you remember when I introduced this yesterday, do you remember how I made a connection? A horizontal stretch. So horizontal, if I take something horizontally and stretch it, that means I'm going to make it wider, right? What is that equivalent to in the vertical world? A vertical what? Shrink. Because as I push something down, it's getting wider, right? So here's what I want to prove to you. Because the other possible answer here is, what if we would have just done 0.4x quantity squared? What is 0.4x quantity squared? In other words, if I write that without the parentheses. 0.16. And so this could be rewritten to think of it as 0.16x squared. Well, if I write it in this sense, 0.16x squared, it's a number times x squared, yes? If it's a number times x squared, this now fits into the vertical world, and this is a vertical what? Vertical shrink, because it's a number less than one. So the other option here is vertical shrink by factor and in this case, I just left it decimal, 0.16. Well, this is where I got consumed with other things this morning. And I don't remember how it's phrased in homework. Because I knew that question was coming. Okay, so on the answer key, I have both listed. I have like blank or blank. So, I mean, I guess what I'd like you guys to do is at least try and figure out the, ver the horizontal. The vertical is the easier one, right? And I get that because we could have just squared that from the beginning. We would have known the vertical. We would have been good to go. Um, I'd like you to at least try and figure out the horizontal. Um, I haven't thought it. I don't remember what I've done in the test in the past. I haven't worked on my test for this year yet to know. But, um, I'd like you to at least try the horizontal, okay? Officially, as I look at the answer key, it's this or this. So you could put one or the other. But, you know, don't totally ignore the horizontal and think, oh, that one's harder, I'm going to ignore it. At least try and think about it, okay? Yes? So what you're saying is we, instead of doing the easier one, we could just do the harder one. And if we just do the harder one, you're okay with that? Yes, yeah. You don't have to do both of these. No. The idea is it's an either or. Okay. So, and again, I wanted to make that connection for you. I feel like that connection is an important one. So let's go talk about C. Because it's in parentheses, it's 5x raised to the power of 2. Okay. Got any options for me?
okay? So Mace is going <laughs> to, he's smirking as he says this. If you take the easy route and you go ahead and square that, which we're going to go back and do the hard route. You don't get out of it that easily. You know that. But he's looking at the fact that this is 5x quantity squared. Technically, that could be rewritten how? It's 25x squared, yes? So what is that equivalent to then? Put that one in words for me. Okay, because it's a number times the function. It's a vertical. It's a number bigger than one. So it's a stretch. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 25. I'm not disagreeing with it. But notice, I put that one down at the bottom. I want to talk about the horizontal. Now, think about it. If it's a vertical stretch, it's a horizontal what? Horizontal shrink, yes? Okay, so we've got that knowledge going. In order to figure out that horizontal shrink, you have to rewrite this. This is currently 5 times x. Okay? Or if you prefer, we can say x times 5, yes? Okay? So then it's what? It's x divided by reciprocal 1 fifth. We're doing the reverse of what we normally do, right? And so this can be rewritten as x divided by one-fifth quantity squared. Okay, it's so always just taking that reciprocal to put it in the denominator to see what you're dividing by instead of multiplying by. So now, this is a horizontal what? Shrink by a factor of? One-fifth, and one-fifth is less than one, so that should make sense to you, I hope. Horizontal shrink by a factor of one-fifth. Now, to go back to the question of do we have to do both, and I said no. However, you need to state horizontal or vertical, yes? Don't just tell me it's a stretch or it's a shrink, because that doesn't fully answer it anymore. Last year in Algebra 2, we just had vertical. He could get away with just saying stretch or shrink. This year, you can't. You need to specify for me. Okay? Questions there? See the connections? See the relations? Maybe. Oh, I forgot about D. I'm going to skip D. Okay. What about D? It's one-third, Y equals one-third X squared. So what do you guys know? Vertical shrink by a factor of one-third. Do I do anything horizontal with this one? No. Okay. So because the number is just out there multiplying, you don't have to worry about it. So vertical shrink by a factor of one-third. Okay, now moving on to the next row. Finding equations for stretches and shrinks. So we have to apply it here. Let the function be defined by f of x equals x cubed minus 16x. So that's our starting function. Find the equations for the following non-rigid transformations of f of x. So a says a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Keep in mind what's our original function. f of x is x cubed minus 16x, yes? How do we do a vertical stretch by a factor of 3? What's it say on the other side? To do a vertical stretch, you take that C value and put it in front and multiply the function, right? So in this case, what's my C value? 3. So that means I'm going to do 3 times f of x. 
Well, what does doing 3 times f of x mean? Okay. It means 3 times x cubed minus 16x. Okay. Can you multiply that out? Yeah. So if we go a step farther, we know that 3 times f of x is equal to 3x cubed minus 48x. That was a stretch of 3. Excuse me, a vertical stretch of 3. Okay. This one, I want a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half. How do I do a shrink? A horizontal shrink. We're going to divide, yes? And so we're going to be dividing by? Okay. I'm going to go with one half for the moment. Now, that kind of looks ugly. Every place I see an x, I have to put x divided by one half. That's what that means. Every place I see an x in my function, I'm going to replace it with x divided by 1 half. Equivalate it for me. What is x divided by 1 half? Keep, change, flip. Yes? Multiply by the reciprocal. And so x divided by 1 half is x times 2 or is... 2x. Would that be a little bit easier to do the math on? Yeah. So instead of doing x divided by 1 half, I'm going to do f of 2x. Every place I see an x, I'm replacing it with 2x. So my function was x cubed. So what's that mean? Instead of x cubed, this is going to be 2x to the third. Notice it's a quantity, so I put 2x in parentheses. Minus, instead of 16 times x, it's going to be 16 times 2x. Okay, and if you want to write it in here, I wrote on the board, not on here. x divided by 1 half is x times 2 over 1, if that helps you. So, what is this f of 2x equal to when I clean it up? What is 2x quantity raised to the power of 3? What? 8x cubed? Because that 2 has to be raised to the third also, yes? So 8x cubed minus 16 times 2x. Minus 32x. Okay. Questions there? Okay. Almost there. Combining transformations in order. So they're giving us the graph, and my equation is y equals x squared. It undergoes the following transformations in order. So they're saying this is the order it happens in. Find the equation of the graph that results. So we know there's going to be a horizontal shift to the to the right. Then there's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. And then there's going to be a vertical translation by the units up. So my suggestion here, piece by piece. Horizontal shift to the units to the right. How do you apply that to the function y equals x squared? Almost. I'm not sure if I heard the right combo or not. So, okay, two units to the right, you guys are agreeing that it's minus two. Where does that minus two have to go since it's a left-right movement? Inside the parentheses. Now, when we say inside the parentheses, where is that squared at now? Outside. Okay. So if you put x squared minus two and then put parentheses around that, that's, that doesn't do anything for me. That's the x minus two quantity squared. So that's saying right too. 
Now, I have to take that equation and stretch by a factor of three. So, and it does say vertical stretch. Vertical stretch is multiplying the function by three. So now what's my equation read? Three, no, start with the basics here. Three parentheses, x minus two squared. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, you do not want to distribute because there is, that's not just a single parentheses, that's a power of two. If you distribute that three right there, you actually just multiply by nine because you multiplied both sets of parentheses by three. That's why we'll never distribute into something with a power. Does that make sense? Okay. And you're fine leaving it like this, guys. Let's not go to that extra work anyways. And now, how do I show an up five? Plus five at the end. So y equals three times x minus two quantity squared plus five. And when you're asked to do transformations like that, you can usually leave it as such. They don't usually want it multiplied out and all that jazz. Now, part B, apply the transformations in the opposite order. And I want you guys to see this because I want you guys to see what the differences are. So we're starting with x squared, but this time up five. How do we do the up five first? Okay, so that one is just y equals x squared plus five. Then going backwards, vertical stretch by a factor of three. So what's that mean? You're multiplying the whole thing by three. I have mixed emotions there. I'm honestly fine with you leaving it like that. However, you could say 3x squared plus 15 here. Okay. Um, I left that as is in my notes. We could go two different, we could go both ways here. Okay. And what's the last thing we have to do? So horizontal shift by fact by two, right? Two to the right. How do I show that? Yeah, you're subtracting two, and that has to subtract two from the x. So what do I have to do with the x? Yeah, it's going to be x minus two, and that is quantity squared, yes? But we still have a plus five, and what was that three doing? It was multiplying by everything. So you can write this one of two ways. I wrote mine as three times that I put brackets to just to go outside the parentheses as the whole quantity, x minus two squared plus five. If you had distributed the three, you would have had three parentheses x minus two squared plus 15. That is equivalent, okay? but this more shows the order we went in. Okay? Yes, correct. Yep. Because that's, I kind of already distributed it. So both are equivalent. This one, if I go through and do this, this makes me think up fifth, you know, um, the up 15 because the stretch is done prior, so. Two different ways you can look at it. Example seven. We have a graph over there, okay? That little thing. Determine the graph of the function y equals two times f of x plus one minus three by showing the effects of a sequence of transformations on the graph y equals f of x. So. What pieces do you guys see here? What are the pieces that are going to happen? Yes, no? Okay. 
At some point, there's going to be a down three, yes? I don't care about order right now. Just There's going to be a left one. And? Yeah. A vertical stretch by two. Can we all identify those at least? Okay. In terms of order here, okay, order does matter to an extent, especially because there's a stretch in there. Okay. Um, that would be my suggestion, is stretch it first. You can, in all honesty, um, you can stretch it first or move your left first. Okay, but the down three has to be saved at the end. Okay, the stretch and left won't really affect each other. So, now, as you look at that weird little graph off to the right, do you see your important points that you're working with? Okay, to begin with, okay, let me see. So, first of all, are we going to stretch it first then? So, if we do our 2 f of x, that means we're doing our stretch, yes? And we guys, we already talked about this is a vertical stretch by 2. Okay, guys, vertical. Silly question, but where's vertical? That is up, yes? So, okay, my question is if vertical is up, is that X or Y values? That's your Y values, yes, because Ys measure up. So a vertical stretch does not affect your X values. It only changes your Y value. So, for instance, this point right here is negative 2, 0, yes? Negative 2 is the x value. It's going to stay negative 2. A stretch of 2 means you take the y value and multiply it by 2. What happens when you stretch a 0? It's still a 0, yes, because 2 times 0 is 0. So that point's actually going to stay as is, negative 2, 0. This is the one that more matters. I have the point 0, 2. The x value of 0 stays. A y value of 2. What happens when you stretch a y value of 2 by 2? Or what is 2 times 2? 4. So 0, 2 now becomes 0, 4. I have a 4, 0 point. My y value is 0. So when you stretch a y value of 0, 0 times 2 is 0. So we stretched it up. Um, when I draw this, I don't know, it looks like there's a little bit of a curve on the left side and the right side looks more like a straight line. I, that's how I draw this figure. Whatever. I'm more concerned that you understand how to get those points. Now, what's the next piece we were going to do? Left one. So left one is doing the x plus one part. So what's that mean? Every single one of those points I'm going to take left one. So I did, based on my last graph, I had a dot at negative two, zero. I'm going to take that left one. I'm now at negative three, zero. I did have a dot at 0, 4. When I take that left one, I'm at negative 1, 4. I did have a point at 4, 0. Now I'm at 3, 0. And the last thing we're being asked to do, the minus 3 is down 3. So when we do down three, all of those points we just mentioned go down three. So I did have a dot at negative three, zero. When we take that down three, 
negative 3, negative 3. I did have a point at 1, 4. Take that down 3. 1, 1. I did have a point at 3, 0. Take that down 3. 3, negative 3. Looks something like that. Okay. Your homework is 2 through 32 evens on page 136. Um, make sure you watch the directions on the homework. 22 and 24, as I drew those graphs, I drew those graphs all on one graph. Okay? I forget exactly how it's worded. But sketch the graph of F, G, and H by hand. Support your answers with a grapher, so with a calculator. So they're asking you to sketch them first. So on 22, I put all three of those graphs on one graph. Same thing on 24. All three on one. Okay?